it's Emily from the Upper Skagit Library. Um, today I'm doing the March story time. Um, I'm really excited. This one's really sweet and really fun. I've got my rainbow back up today. Um, and the theme for this month is gardens. Because um, we're all looking forward to the sun coming out and it's starting to get a little warmer and all the plants starting to grow. Um, and we get to grow our own plants sometimes. I'm sure a lot of you kids have your own gardens at home, um, but I do have a really cute little craft experiment thing for you guys to try, and I have a couple great books. Um, first of all, do you guys want to sing the hello song? I don't know if you remember it. It goes, hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello to you, hello to you, hello to you, hello to you. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Yay! <laughs> Do you guys want to try it one more time? Okay. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello to you, hello to you, hello to you, hello to you. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. I'm so glad to see you all again. I've seen a lot of you in the library. Everybody's kind of coming back in. Um, I'm really excited for it to start getting warmer. And um, so let's just jump right into the first book. We've got The Hidden Rainbow by Christy Matheson. And um, you guys might notice this happens a lot of times since I use a green screen. But some of the green is going to have some rainbows hidden in it. And you know what? That's not really a bad thing. <laughs> so the starting page you'll see has some green in it. <laughs> The Hidden Rainbow by Christy Matheson. One little bee peeks out to see a world of gray and snow. She's looking for bright colors and she needs you to help them grow. This is, book is a lot of fun. You get to do a lot of fun things with your fingers. So maybe you can help by reaching up to the screen and helping me out sometimes. First, please brush the snow off the budding camilla trees. The snow off. It just snowed the other day, didn't it? Uh, hopefully that's the last snow of the season. We'll start getting more sunshine. Tulip. Look, the flowers are, what color are they? They're red. And the nectar feeds two bees. Do you guys see the two bees? Tickle the very tops of the growing tulip leaves. Very soon the bees will find, tickle, 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 tickle. <laughs> Orange, and can you see three bees? Do you see three bees? Next, point to the crocus shoots, just beginning to sprout. Down here. Clover. And this page is yellow, but yellow kind of blends into the green, huh? Four bees are eating pollen. Now that yellow has come out, now it's time to search for a special four leaf clover. Do you see in the clover, do you see a four leaf clover? Do you know why four leaf clovers are special? Not because they're lucky. Maybe you can go out and find a four leaf clover in uh, your yard or in the nearest grassy area where there's some clover. What? Look! Uh-oh, it's so green you can barely see it. A field of green with five bees zooming over. Please wave the bees back to their hive. Clouds are gathering for a shower. I know it's very hard to see, but maybe you can see the five bees on this page. The bees don't like the rain, but it's important for the flowers. Do you know why it's important for flowers to get rain? When the flowers need some things so that they can grow. They need sunshine and they need rain. And do you know what sunshine and rain together make? It's my background. They make a rainbow. <laughs> it's my favorite. Forget me not. This is my favorite flower. Blow the forget me not buds dry as the rain clears from the sky. Hyacinth. 
The sun is shining, blue is blooming, and six bees are buzzing by. Now trace a line straight down the orderly hyacinth row. I'm gonna try it. And you can also see the six bees. You see them? Seven bees are foraging in blooms of indigo. You're practically done. Now blow a kiss to the lovely lilac trees. See the lilac trees? The violet blossoms are, are brimming with nectar for eight bees. At last, get ready to find, here, hold on. Can you see the eight bees? At last, get ready to find nine bees on the rainbow you grew. But the story's not over. These bees have work to do. Do you see nine bees? Maybe you can pause the screen and try to look at. You can see the green here in the middle. It's kind of blending into the green background. That's too bad. But maybe you guys can come get the book from the library and you can check it out. Can you see 10 humming bees getting busy in the trees? They're spreading so much pollen. You might just have to, here's the trees. Do you see the apple, peach, pear, blueberry? There's another apple, it's blackberry and plum. Achoo! And why are the bees spreading pollen? So something you can eat can grow. Thanks to bees, soon you'll have your own delicious rainbow. Oh, thank you, bees. And in the end here, we have some information about bees and why they're so good. I love bees. Um, sometimes they're a little scary because I know they can sting. So I get a little nervous, but I just try to say, hi, bee, and then maybe walk away. <laughs> I don't want to get stung. but. They only stink because they're scared, and that's okay. Um, so let's sing a song. Um, let's do the plants begin to grow. Okay, so it's um, a song where I'll do a little repetition, so you'll you'll be able to maybe sing along with me, or you can play this song uh, again and sing along with me then. Okay. So um, it says. The farmer plants the seeds, the farmer plants the seeds. Hi ho the dairy -o. the farmer plants the seeds. The rain begins to fall, the rain begins to fall. Hi ho the dairy -o. the rain begins to fall. The sun begins to shine, the sun begins to shine. Hi ho the dairy -o. the sun begins to shine. The plants begin to grow, the plants begin to grow. Hi ho the dario, the plants begin to grow. The buds all open up, the buds all open up. Hi ho the dario, the buds all open up. The flower smiles at me, the flower smiles at me. Hi ho the dario, the flower smiles at me. <laughs> that was kind of fun. It goes to the tune of a song that you might have heard of before. And if you don't know, maybe you can ask your parents and see if they know. Um, we have one more book. I really like this one. It doesn't necessarily have to do with planting things, but it does have to do with gardens. Um, do you guys know what lives in gardens? There's a couple things. There's some animals like hedgehogs and snails and squirrels. Um, there's also things like fairies that live in gardens and there's things like gnomes. I love gnomes. I think they're so cute. Um, so this book is called Go Big or Go Gnome, and it is by Kirsten Mayer. And this book also has a lot of green in it, unfortunately. There's a lot of green this month, and it's because all the growing things are really green, huh? So Go Big or Go Gnome. This is Albert the Gnome. You can call him Al. Al lives in a hollowed out mushroom cap with a roof of pine cone shingles and a front door made of a sturdy acorn top. 
Owl works in a garden with other gnomes. Melvin sweeps up sticks and stones. Earl rakes rows of very small rocks. Bartleby has dandelion duty, fluffing the fluff. Cliff bathes the birds and fills the fountains. Harold wrangles wiggly worms. Al takes care of the shrubbery, trimming a leaf here and there to keep it tidy. And his best friend, Norm, sweeps up after him. See how all these busy gnomes have imperial beards and illustrious mustaches? All of them do. See, all of them do, except who? Except for Al. He doesn't have a beard at all. He tries and tries, but he can't grow a single whisker on his face. That is too bad for Al because the biggest event of the year for gnomes is B.I.G., the Beards International Gnomathon. Every gnome in the garden grooms and prunes and primps and crimps to win trophies for longest beard, bushiest beard, and overall best beard. Everyone except Al. This really gets my goatee, said Norm. It's not fair for you to be left out. Al strokes his smooth chin thoughtfully. I have an idea. This is Engelbert the gnome, the grandmaster judge of whiskers. It takes a lot to impress old Engelbert. The first contest is for longest beard. Gnomes line up to see whose scruff is the most inchworms long. A lot of long beards, huh? Al steps up next. He has a beautiful long white beard. It's so light and fluffy that it floats in the air. Well, what do we have here? Did Albert finally sprout some whiskers? Asked Engelbert, chuckling. Then the old gnome leans in for a closer look. Something tickles his nose, and he lets out a great big achoo! And dozens of tiny white butterflies fly away. False beard, roars Engelbert. The next competition is for bushiest beard. Al's beard is now a unique reddish color and very bushy. Did that beard just twitch? Asked the old gnome. Oh, no, sir. I just wiggled my chin, said Al. Then suddenly there's a chitter under Al's cap, and Engelbert whisks it off and uncovers a squirrel. False beard, he roars. Norm smushes some moss onto Al's face, but it just plops to the ground. Oh, it's no use, said Al. I'm just boring, bare-faced gnome. I'll never win longest or bushiest or overall best beard. I'll never be a winner, not ever. Al goes home and trims some shrubbery to keep himself busy. Look at all these cool shapes he's making. It's kind of hard to see. That's too bad. A little while later, Norm runs up in a panic. Al, Al, I need your help. I got tree sap in my beard and now it's stuck. He says, I'll never win best beard tomorrow. Can you fix it? Al goes to work. He snips and clips all the tree sap out of his friend's beard. Then he trims a little more. There you go, I did what I could, said Al. It's a little different. Norm runs to the bird bath to look at his reflection in the water. His new beard looks gnome-tastic. Wow, Norm, that's some beard you have, says Bartleby. It's a real zinger, says Cliff. But where'd you get it? Al trimmed my beard for me, and now I'll win best beard for sure, Norm shouts as he jumps up and down. Sure, it's real, asked Melvin, giving it a yank. Maybe I should get a beard trim from Al, too, wonders Harold. Last one there's rotten acorn, cries Earl as he takes off running. The next morning, Al wakes up and shuffles outside, and he's shocked to see a long line of gnomes waiting in front of his house. Look, Al, Norm says. Every gnome wants you to trim their beards too. I better get started. I will be a close shave. It will be a close shave to get everyone ready in time. Later that day, a parade of gnomes struts through the garden, showing off an array of amazing beards. Look at all those cool shapes. Engelbert can't believe his eyes. Goodness, greatness. Fancy feathers. Bristles and banjos. Whimsy and whiskers. Engelbert claps his hands to silence the crowd. Every beard today is truly special. I have never seen anything like it in the history of B.I.G. 
I declare the competition for best beard to be a 30-way tie. Every gnome wins. Engelbert walks over to Al and hands him a trophy. Albert, you're getting a special prize for bringing beards to a new level and raising the handlebar for this competition. You are the winner of the first ward for best barber. Every gnome cheers as loudly as they can. Albert the gnome is the winner. After much celebrating, Al walks home. He thinks about where to put his trophy. He doesn't even notice that his light is on and his acorn door is slightly open. Hi, I'm Ginger. I was wondering, could you give me a haircut? Looks like she might need one, huh? The end. I love this book. Go big or go gnome. I think that's a cute one. Um, so I do have a kind of a craft, kind of a science experiment today. Um, but it's really, really easy. So uh, I will have some of this at the library. And um, we have a really great partnership with the Finney Farm. So um, we got a bunch of seeds. We have a new seed library at the library. So we have all of these really great seeds and you can come take them home. Isn't that super cool? Um, so I also have these little peat, uh, peat planters that you can use. And all you have to do, and I'll, I'll have um, some baggies of soil if you want them at the library. Um, you just go ahead and fill up your little peat cup here and then you stick a seed in and you can water it and you water it every day and you watch it grow. Um, and one of the best plants to do that with, I have it here, is the uh, bean. So this one is the Cherokee Trail of Tears beans. Um, so you can kind of see what some of these look like. I got the beans, I got heirloom tomato mix. Oh, I'm so excited for that one. Do you guys love tomatoes? Of tomatoes and I love heirloom tomatoes and then we have the thinny sunflower mix and then I also got the lettuce mix and there's a bunch of other ones there too there's also sorts of really fun things that you can put in your garden um, but I have these if you want to do a little starter at home and you can kind of start it a little early if you want to um, so come on by check that out pick some pea cups up and check out the library because I have added a bunch of cool stuff I added some stickers and some toys. So the library is super fun right now. All right, so that's about it for story time, you guys. Thanks for coming by and hanging out with me as I read some books on gardening. Um, go ahead and come to the library. We've got all of the story time books right in front of that story time chair and you can pick them and grab them. You can read them there or you can take them home. That's good too. Um, so we have one last song to sing. Do you guys remember the goodbye song? If you remember, I'm going to sing a phrase and you can repeat it after me, okay? Um, so let's all say goodbye in a fun, silly way. It's time to end our happy day. Uh, in an hour, sunflower. In an hour, sunflower. Better swish, jellyfish. <laughs> swish, jellyfish. Give a hug, ladybug. Give a hug, ladybug. Peace, geese. Peace, geese. <laughs> Let's all say goodbye in a fun, silly way. It's time to end our happy day. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for watching the video. It's so good to have you guys around, and I can't wait to see you in the library. I love seeing your little faces every time you come in, and I'll see you soon.